Hi, I'm Carl, and in this video we're going to have a look at questions 36 to 41 of the green booklet. This is a question about a 100 meter sprint, and we have a graph of velocity and distance showing the journey that the runner took. We've also got some equations here which I've written out. Um, it's worth having a copy of the graph beside you so you can reference it as we go along. Um, question 36 says, of the following estimates of the time, which is the best for the uh, amount of time that the runner took to run the final 50 meters. So I've drawn in the 50 meter mark here and we can see that there's an average velocity of roughly around 12 for this. Um, it starts off at slightly above 12 and slightly below. So I think doing that, given that we're dealing with estimates here, we can uh, assume it to be 12. Um, now, this one seems a little more complicated than it is, but we need to remember that velocity is just distance traveled over time. So we can rearrange this to get time equals uh, distance over velocity. If we plug in the numbers, we know there's this last 50 meters traveled at an average speed of 12 meters uh, per second. Uh, we can simplify this then to get 25 over 6. Now to make this a decimal so it fits in better with the answers that have been given, we can divide 6 into 25 this way. And we can get 4.16 recurring, which is pretty close to 4.2. And the estimate that's closest to this is going to be 4.3 seconds. So the answer for this is going to be B. Question 37 then says, the best of the following estimates of the average acceleration of the runner over the first 15 meters is what? So for this sort of question, I think it's worth just writing out what we know so far. So we know S is going to be 15 meters. We know the initial velocity is going to be zero. The final velocity at 15 meters, I'm pretty sure that's nine. From the graph that's what i'm getting a is what we're trying to work out so i'll put a star beside that and t is something we don't know okay so which equation uses s u v and a out of the ones that we've been given here and it'll be this final one this v squared equals u squared plus 2 a s so if we just put in our values here we get v squared which is going to be 81 equals 0 plus 2 on 15 times a. So 81 over 30 is going to be a here. We can simplify this down to 27 over 10, which gives us 2.7. And that's the estimate that we've got from our readings of the graph. And the one that's closest to this is going to be 2.5 meters per second squared. So that's going to be um, answer D in this case. For number 38, it's a number of graphs that we can choose from. I think the easiest way of doing this is actually just to draw a graph yourself and see which one um, matches up. So we can put time down on this axis and distance on this one. At the start, he's going slowly, so we're going to have a um, more shallow, lower gradient line. And then there's going to be an inflection around this point here, um, at which there's a higher and more steady velocity looking like this. Um, so th from the shape of the curve, we can rule out B and D and that leaves us with A and C. And the difference is this sort of point of inflection. We can see that there's a change to this more constant speed at around 20 meters. And so we can say that this graph resembles uh, C the most. So the answer for number 38 is gonna be C. So we'll just write that in here. Okay, so 39. The best of the following estimates of the time that the runner took to run the first 20 meters is what? Okay, so to run the first 20 meters, um, again, this is a bit similar to 37. It's worth just writing out everything we know. So I'm just going to draw out all the variables here. We know that the distance is going to be 20. The initial velocity is zero. We can get the final velocity from the graph. Um, it looks like it's slightly above 11, but we'll write that down as 11. The acceleration is something we don't know, but I'll come back to that. And then the time is what we're looking for. So we can uh, put a star beside this. So we know that's what we're looking for and just leave that as t now the reason i left a like this is because it doesn't actually matter that we don't know it we just need to remember that acceleration is just going to be the change in speed over time and we know the change in speed is going to be um 20 meters per second oh sorry 11 meters per second over a time period which we've called t and if we're solving for t it's okay to leave it in terms of t so that gets rid of one of our unknowns so if we're going to be um, picking one of the equations to plug these values into, I think the first one we gave us is probably the most useful in this case. And it was s equals ut plus a half at squared. 
And the reason I like this is because of the way the acceleration and the time sort of cancel out the t's and it makes it a little bit easier. So let's just plug in our values. And we can get a half upon 11 over t, t squared. We can simplify this to 11 over or 11 t then. Um, we're just dividing both sides by half and then multiplying out that 1 over t. That tells us that t is going to be 40 over 11 and uh, we can work out what that is now then. So um, there's a, obviously a couple of different ways of doing this. You might want to just approximate it. Um, I'm going to uh, do just normal division here like this. Uh, we can see that we've got 3 into 40 here, and that leaves 7, 3.6. We've already arrived at one of the answers, so we can leave it there. Um, that's left us with answer C, 3.6 seconds. Uh, so the answer for 39 is going to be C. And the next one we're going to look at then is 40. It says of the following, the distance that the runner traveled during the first five seconds is closest to what? Okay, so... In these sorts of questions, you might see sometimes that the answers you've already given could be used to answer another question in the future. And if we look at the graphs given in 38, we can see that they're a distance time graph, which makes it a lot easier to answer this question. Um, so if we were to look at um, graph C, which we decided was pretty good, um, we can see that at the five second mark, the person had traveled 40 meters. And so the answer for this one is gonna be B. And then for 41, it says, in another race, the runner ran 200 meters in a straight line in 19.5 seconds. For the first 100 meters, his velocity changed with distance as shown in figure one. So it's exactly the same as what we've been dealing with. If his acceleration was constant for the last 100 meters, the best of the following estimates of his velocity as he crossed the finishing line is what? Okay, so there's a couple of different ways of doing this sort of question with any of these sort of velocity questions. Um, I think the easiest and most intuitive way is just to draw a velocity time graph. So time and velocity. And we've been told he has a constant acceleration, or in this case, a deceleration, which I'm gonna draw um, a line here, and it's downward sloping because there is this just normal deceleration. We start off with an initial um, velocity, which will be the final velocity from the last one. You can think of figure one as just um, preceding this and this is sort of just continuing on figure one and I can see this is about 11.5 um, meters per second and we've got a final velocity um, that I, I'll draw across like this um, and we'll just call that v and then we know the time taken here will be 9.5 seconds because the whole thing takes 19.5 seconds and we want to take away the initial 10 seconds so that leaves us with our 9.5 seconds at the end so the reason that I like velocity time graphs is because the distance covered is actually just the area of that shape that we've drawn here, this triangle plus the rectangle. So if we work out the area of that in terms of V um, and then set that equal to 100, we can solve for V and get the answer. And I'll show you what I mean by this now. So we've got the two parts to it. Um, we know this, the area is going to be equal to 100 meters. So let's... Um, work out what the shapes might be. So the triangle is going to be half times the base, which is going to be um, 9.5 seconds times the height, which is going to be 11.5 minus V. Another way you could do it is just leave it in terms of U, which I might do just um, to keep it simple. And we'll deal with all the decimals later on. So that's the triangle. And we want to add on now the area for the rectangle, which is going to be V times 9.5. And we know this is going to be equal to 100. So we could simplify this a little bit um, and half of 9.5 is 4.75 and we could factor this out then and we get u minus v plus 2v equals 100. So u minus v plus 2v is going to be u plus v equals 100 and we'll divide both sides by 4.75. Great. So then we can do v equals um, 100 over 4.75, which we'll have to fix, minus u. And we can change u back to um, 11.5 now. Great. So 
if we were to do 100 over 5, which is what this approximately is, we'd get 20. So we know the answer is going to be slightly greater than 20. So I'm just going to call it for the sake of simplicity here, 21. Uh, it's okay to round things in this exam because obviously you didn't have a calculator and for the sake of time, it makes it a little bit easier. So if we do V equals 21 minus 11.5, we get a value of uh, 9.5 meters per second. And that corresponds in this case to answer C. So that was um, questions 36 to 41 of section three of the Green Booklet. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.